What's going on YouTube? This is NecroSteve and it's time for the Week 9 Battle of the Pokemon Premier League. This week, the Eterno City Enders are going up against the uh, Parasect Germain, who are actually coached by Alex. I'll be sure to leave his link in the description for you to check out. Um, if you haven't seen the team analysis for this battle, be sure to check it out because it had a massive impact on the battle overall. Uh, so, and also go check out his because watching his analysis makes his team make a lot more sense. Now, when looking at the Pokemon that he could have brought, remember we were specifically really worried about um, things like Victini, uh, we were also worried about Thunderous, and even something like Tyrantrum to an extent. Uh, he didn't bring really any of that. The only thing that he brought that I really expected him to bring was the Thunderous and the Mega Audino. Everything else was kind of up in the air. Uh, so not only did I completely mispredict his team, he actually mispredicted my team. I did bring Kofagrigus with Toxic Spikes because I did want to use that to wear down his team. And that actually worked out pretty well in this battle. I ended up bringing the bulky Toxic Hook set that I bred for several, several, several weeks ago. Um, I did just run some calc with that specific set to make sure I could take hits. For example, I knew that that Toxic Hook can take a Life Orb Thunderbolt from a Thunderous if needed. And I also brought Standard Law Punny, Calm Mind Florges, um, Calm Mind Reuniclus. I did not go with the Trick Room build. And I brought uh, Landmaster, the Garchomp again with Fire Blast just for Chestnut if I ran into that situation. I did end up leading off with Kofagrigus just because I wanted to get up Toxic Spikes as early as possible. And uh, I also knew that his Sand Slash was the only way that he could get rid of those Toxic Spikes, and he couldn't spin as long as Kofagrigus was around. So the earlier I got them up, the more poison I could spread around his team, the better it would be for some of my other teammates to break down his uh, team overall. Um, it appears that he seems to have planned a lot for me to bring Sand, and as I said in the team analysis video, I didn't want to bring Tyranitar um, and Stalin just because he had so many different ways to check it. Now he surprises me here in the first turn of the battle with Taunt. I thought he was just going to set up Spikes or even Leech Seed me. Uh, but with Taunt, that means that I actually can't touch him. Um, which that means he gets a free opportunity to set up Spikes because Shadow Ball is blocked by Bulletproof. Which blocks Ball and um, Blast type attacks. Uh, as he switches out into his Reuniclus here, I figured if he could hit me with Chestnut, it would just be a Grass type move. Which wouldn't do that much damage seeing Spikes. Um, Knockoff from Sand Slash doesn't actually do that much either. And I wanted to just put Sand Slash out of range where it would be pretty easy to revenge kill him. Uh, he does surprise me once again with Super Fang. I, I've i run Super Fang on Sand Slash previously myself. Of course, it cuts your current HP level in half. Um, he surprises me because he hits all these Super Fangs as well. Super Fang does not have perfect accuracy. But he hits every single one. I wanted to make sure Reuniclus was at a level where um, if Scyther came in, and use something that wasn't a bug type attack, I could live it. Uh, that's a little bit testy because I was very worried about him running a choice banded Scyther. I decided to go ahead and knock out Sand Slash at the level of HP that I'm at. He does bring out Scyther, but as I find out later on, Scyther is actually choice scarfed, and seeing the damage here from Aerial Ace, I actually thought that he was banded um, based on the damage that Aerial Ace can do to Reuniclus. Uh, but most importantly, I wanted to make sure that I could finish him off with something else. If he was Scarfed, I was, I, at that point in the battle, I was really 50-50 on if he was Scarfed or Banded. Uh, but if I went ahead and put that damage on it with Size Shock, then I could finish him off with something else, like a Fake Out from Law Pony or something like that. Now, it does turn out that he is Scarfed. Um, bringing in my Kofagrigus here gets rid of his Technician ability, which is going to lower the damage that he can do. And this is a free opportunity to set up Toxic Spikes. I could have gone for Will-O-Wisp on the Switch, but I really, really, really wanted Toxic Spikes up. I didn't feel like Will-O-Wisp would do that much. Really, I mean, it would lower the uh, Chestnut's ability to hit me with Drain Punch or Seed Bomb, but I, I wanted the Toxic Spikes up. I thought that that would help more. Um, now here, I didn't know if he would go for a Taunt or not because that seemed really, really obvious, so I tried to recover up in his face. And of course, he called me on that. He kept me honest by going for Taunt anyways. Um, he brings an Audino, which is one of the main things I wanted to make sure was poison as I go for Psy Shock. I get a critical hit. I'm not sure if that critical hit mattered too much just because how bulky Audino is. And Audino, of course, has the ability to recover his HP with Wish or even Draining Kiss. 
Uh, he goes for a Dazzling Gleam right here, and that means that my Reuniclus is going to go down. Um, but I'm not too sad about that. Reuniclus definitely did a good job in taking a good amount of damage off of Sandslash, Scyther, and now even Audino. And now that Audino is poisoned, I can bring in Lopunny, go for the free Mega Evolution, and go for Fake Out to force him to take another turn of poison damage. Now, unfortunately, his Audino is so bulky, I didn't think that from that range I could actually KO it with a power up punch, which is what I really wanted to do. So I'm just going to have to force to be taking him out with return here because I didn't want to risk missing high jump kick. Um, as he goes out into Scyther here, I was like, really? Scyther, does he have quick attack? But yeah, he's definitely scarfed. Uh, he just goes straight for Aerial Ace, and that. It's a good thing I switched out there, otherwise, I would have lost Lopunny for basically no reason. Um. At the level of HP I'm at after Leftovers, I was actually fairly certain that I could live another Aerial Ace. And so I just went straight for um, Pain Split. Uh, I wanted to go for Pain Split actually, but I went for Toxic Spikes again just so I could make sure I could wear down his Polyrath in case he was running something weirdly bulky with Substitute or something like that. Um, he actually goes for Toxic on my Cofagrigus, and that actually clued me in that his only offensive move was probably a Fighting type move. And since he went for Toxic, this is great because I get all that HP back through Pain Split. So not using Pain Split a turn early actually worked out surprisingly. Uh, I still actually can't touch him with my only offensive move being Shadow Ball. I did mean to change that to Hex before the battle, but I actually just didn't get around to it. I was sick and I looked the team over and I was like, the team looks fine, let's go for it. But a little bit of an oversight on my part. Now then, seeing the moves that he has on his Chestnut, it doesn't look like he can really hurt my uh, Toxicroak. It is annoying that he did taunt Toxicroak on the way in because now I can't use bulk up, but that does mean that I can just throw a gunk shot right in his face. Um, I do miss the first gunk shot, which I guess is payback for getting a crit on the Psy Shock, but I don't really think any of this hacks really mattered in the long run, seeing the amount of damage his Drain Punch did. And from this level of HP, I can still KO him with a gunk shot if I hit him with another one. Uh, the level of HP he's gaining back from Drain Punch and Leftovers is not going to really outdo Poison, and I finish him off with a Gunk Shot, which is fantastic. Uh, since Sand Slash is already down, my Toxic Croak doesn't actually have a lot to worry about besides the Scyther. I was figuring he was going to go for a U-turn here, so I just went back out into Cofagrigus, but he actually goes for Aerial Ace once again. Um, and after this time though, after I switch in and get Leftovers, even though his ability is now Mummy, the toxic damage is going to take away some of what I gained from Leftovers. And I'm like, please hold on, I would really like to get off uh, some damage here. And I actually hold on with 7 HP, and I'm able to knock out Caesar. Caesar, excuse me, Scyther. I'm able to knock out Scyther with a Shadow Ball, which is fantastic. But in turn, we have one of those delicious double downs where uh, my Cofagrigus goes down to the toxic inflicted on it by Chestnut. So Chestnut actually picks up that KO. Now on the double down scenario, I expect my opponent to go into something faster, and the fastest thing he had left was his uh, Thunderous. He definitely surprised me when he went for a Dark Pulse. I was expecting Thunderbolt. Maybe he was fishing for the um, flinch chance. I do score the Poison Hacks with Gunk Shot, but the Poison didn't matter in this scenario because a Gunk Shot followed up by a Sucker Punch, even without any bulk up attack boost, is enough to KO the standard Thunderous. Uh, he sets up Rain Dance, which definitely surprised me. It turns out that he actually was not running Thunderbolt this week. Um, with Focus Blast, Hidden Power, uh, Rain Dance, and Dark Pulse, which would get fantastic coverage on a lot of the Pokemon that I actually didn't end up bringing. Uh, but since he set up the Rain, now's a good chance that either I, I get to stall out a few turns of Rain, I get my rain, uh, Dry Skin HP Recovery, I get Leftovers HP Recovery, and I get to set up a Bulk Up to make sure I can lift any hit that um, Polyrath, his last remaining Pokemon, wants to go for. Uh, without bulk up, there's a chance that if he's running like a weird banded Polyrath, that something like an Earthquake could do enough damage to one hit KO because I have a little bit more special bulk than I have physical bulk. But uh, based on how well I take this Earthquake, and it's a Life Orb Earthquake from a Polyrath, probably I would guess as Adamant Max Attack, I take that hit really well, and after the Dry Skin, um, Leftovers Recovery or Black Sludge, I'm in a pretty good position here. And because Kafagriga set up Toxic Spikes early on in the battle, that means that he's not going to be able to take the Sucker Punch from this range, even though it's resisted and it's not even stab. 
Uh, so that was a really interesting match. We both really planned for things completely different. And my Florges and my Garchomp didn't even hit the battlefield. So even barring um, not getting the poison hacks on the Thunderous, Florges was basically a complete wall for his two remaining Pokemon. Uh, so that's another victory for the Eterna City Enders. And this is a pretty big victory. I'm very, very proud of this victory overall because not only is Alex a fantastic battler, he was number one on the table. He only had one loss before me. And at this point, I think I've actually beaten both of the teams that are at slot one and slot two on the league table because the Parasite Germain were at slot one and the Portland Timbers were at slot two and I managed to beat both of those teams. Um, so quite pleased overall with how that went. I think that victory is really going to shake things up on the table actually. And this means that we can roll with a lot of momentum into next week's battle for week 10, which is going to be up against the FC Eviton. So definitely look forward to that team analysis coming up at some point. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the battle. I'm excited for this victory and I'm excited to, to keep on moving forward and surprising people in the league. So I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.